We've been wanting to do this episode on Castrol Active Champions for a long time. We're going to talk about a whole generation of champions. In fact, many generations of champions. We are talking about the women who've had quite a history. It's been, it's been a very interesting tale, this, the tale of Indian women's cricket, starting out overcoming huge odds in terms of infrastructure, in terms of facilities, in terms of all that they got when they travelled, all kinds of stories coming through. The first generation fought, fought that, the next generation started to win games and now we're just seeing some outstanding Indian women cricket as it all started. Around the 70s, people like Shobha Pandit were just coming through. But it wasn't till the mid-70s that India got its first real core. Shanta Rangaswamy was like the original CK Naidu. But then there's Shanta Rangaswamy, there was Diana Idalji, Sudhasha, there's a wicketkeeper, Fauzia Khalili, Shubhangi Kulkarni from Maharashtra, who bowled leg spin. And this was the generation that started playing in front of big crowds because people were coming to watch. And people like me started following women's cricket uh, as a result. I talked about Sudarsha down in Tamil Nadu. Was, there, was, there were pioneers there. You had um, Sumati Ayer. Susan E. T. Cherrier, by the way, played a few test matches and her connection with cricket remains because her daughter, of course, is one of our greatest ever squash players, Deepika Palikal, now married to Dinesh Karthik. So there's a little, little story in there as well. But this generation was excellent. Diana Adalji took 100 international wickets and we said, wow, these girls can then play. People like Shanta Rangaswamy and Diana Adalji and Sudasha, they weren't just pioneers. They were, in a sense, protectors of that generation. They were telling people, come and play, come and play cricket. And they protected that era of women's cricket, much like Castrol Active's Actibons protect your bike engine, whether it's running or off. And then another wave started to come around the late 80s, 90s and we first heard of Sandhya Agarwal who made 190 in a test match. We said, oh, she's a good player. And then Purnima Rao arrived, Neetu David, Anju Jain. There was another generation that was starting to form. Anjum Chopra started playing. In fact, I remember being in New Zealand in the, around the mid-90s and a very peculiar phenomenon started to manifest itself. When the men and women travelled together, Whenever the men struggled, the women seemed to win a series. They won, the one, they won a one dare against New Zealand in 94-95. Won the tri-series after that. I remember watching that uh, tri-series too. Doing a little bit of commentary on it for, uh, for the host broadcaster around that time. Purnima Rao scored a lot of runs. And the Indian spinners were always very good. Purnima Rao and Neetu David on both hands. And so these were laying the foundation, much like Shanta and Diana had laid for this generation, for the one that was to follow. And then you started hearing of them winning test matches overseas. Anjum Chopra became captain of India. But it wasn't till the turn of the century that the two best known names in Indian women's cricket came together. By 99, a very young Mitali Raj arrived. By 2002, Julan Goswami came. And what a fabulous journey it's been. They've been torchbearers in many sense. And if there are young girls today who want to play cricket, the Jemima Rodrigues of this world, if all of them want to play cricket, it's because the path was shown by Mitali Raj with the bat and Julan Goswami with the ball and isn't it fantastic? Julan takes more wickets than anybody else in one-day internationals. Mitali scores more runs than anybody else in one-day internationals and there was, there was a whole series of players that started to play around them. And then everybody came to watch that 2017 game, wasn't it? That this is the third new wave of women's cricket in India. Harman Preet Kaur, nobody in Indian women's cricket quite has quite hit the ball like Harman Preet Kaur. Nobody's played with the same dash and fluency as Smriti Mandana. And then there are the spinners, beautiful to watch. Deepti Sharma, there's uh, Ekta Besht, there's uh, Poonam Yadav, all looking very good. And then Jemima Rodriguez arrived, just seeing a wonderful new generation playing cricket. That 2017 World Cup final, much like P.V. Sindhu and Saina Nehwal's arrival in badminton told people in India that Jay, India's women cricket, women's cricketers are playing really good cricket. And I believe this generation, they're not just empowered, they're not just, their responsibility is not just to take the game forward, but also to protect this generation, protect the women's game at such a crucial stage with an IPL round the corner. Protect it much like Castrol Active's Actibons protect your bike engine, whether it's running or off. And I'm hoping that a lot that a lot of young girls now start to 
start to play cricket because we are seeing our wrestlers, we are seeing our badminton players. It's time that the women cricketers stand up. There will be an IPL in course of time. There will be many, uh, many more T20 tournaments. And as television grows, more and more people will come. And I'm looking forward to being around when the next glorious phase of India's women cricketers comes along.